sports. It's in the game. EA Sports. It's in the game. Hey, everybody, it's the coach. This is the NFL 100 Game of the Week on EA Sports. Straight ahead, we've got what should be an interesting matchup between the Indianapolis Colts and the New Orleans Saints. I'll be back at halftime to look at some of these stats and scores from Sunday's action. But for now, it's Monday Night Football. And the It's the final three weeks of the season. Still plenty to play for here as we're underway in week 15. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And here come the Saints for their opening drive. They'll be led out by their quarterback, the guy out of California, the former Cal Bear, Jared Goff. Coming off of a loss their last time out, I think he's just seeking to make a bigger impact on the game. He threw a touchdown pass, didn't throw an interception. I think he just wants to jump those numbers up in terms of flinging it around and letting his receivers get into the end zone. On first down, it's gone. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. Let's get a quick look at the Saints offense. Okay, so he doesn't look like your prototypical number one wide receiver, but T.Y. Hilton gives you that type of production. Seven seasons in the league, he's been over 1,000 yards in five of them. Led the NFL in receiving yards in 2016 and had a strong case to be a Pro Bowler for the fifth time in 2018. Missed it, but probably should have been named to the team. And from the 25, they worked this to the 29, a gain of four. As far as defensive starters go, here they are for Indianapolis. They're going to need to be strong against the run in this one. Now if they could just get their pass defense in line, this unit would be really, really strong. And remember the conversation with the defensive coordinator? He wants them to rush the passer better. He wants to see the quarterback on the ground. They've got to create some sacks. And he said it starts early and often. We'll see if they can get to him. This defense looking for an early stop. This is third down and six. A shotgun snap for Gone. He's got a man open. It's Hunter Renfro. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. Seven yards on the quick slant and a first down. They've got good playmakers on the offensive side of the ball. I don't know what happened last week to, to really hurt their performance and, and hold down their production, but I would dare say that this week in practice, there's a lot of talk about how they're going to increase their proficiency. And that was a good start getting the playmakers involved. You mentioned that to me pregame. That's what they did there. Yeah, I think a lot of people think the coaching staff really gets on them, and that's how they motivate them. Most of these guys are self-motivated. They have a lot of pride in their performance. On the draw, this is Goldman, and they see right through that defensively as he'll be hit and taken down to the backfield it'll be a loss of one and that'll make it third down anytime you call an inside running play you just know there should be a lot of congestion there you're counting on your offensive line to take control of the line of scrimmage that didn't happen in this case and that play got bottled up call the open man here Renfro 10 yards good for his Saints first down Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, a tight, sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage, even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it, and it won't help them at contract time. The second down play, not much better than the first. Just a gain of one there. Now they're coming up on play number eight of this opening drive, but they're looking at a third and long. They'll fake the handoff. Now gone. Nowhere 
there to escape, and he goes down. Domina Pecco racks up the sack. It always helps for a visiting team to come in and set the tone on defense. In fact, when we talked with them prior to the game, they said they wanted this home crowd to feel like they had to hide their valuables when they were in town. <laughs> well, the home crowd quiet now early. See if their offense can take over and get some points on the board. On is the punt team now as this one sent away. And a bit of a mistake there. This is well into the end zone for a touchback. So the Colts now coming out for their opening drive. Leading the charge at quarterback, the former Georgia Bulldog, Matthew Stafford. Well, his ratio was good last week. Most quarterbacks are really excited about a three-to-one ratio, but it's flipped in the wrong direction. <laughs> he threw three interceptions, not touchdown passes, and he only had the one TD pass in that game. So he's trying to turn that around and find a way for his team to win. Here's the second year back from Southern Miss, Edo Smith. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. A gain of 11 that time at a Colts first down. Well, one unit I know you want to watch is that offensive line. If they keep clearing holes like that, it could be a long night defensively. No doubt about it, because when they are in sync, as we're seeing so far, when that continuity is there, and you can see that they're playing off of each other while controlling the defensive front linebackers, you're exactly right. It could be a very long night for the defense because someone's going to run for some big yardage. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. Now the first carry for Brian Hill. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Indianapolis moving the chains there on a gain of 12. Usually we see runs like this as the defense breaks down later in the game, but this guy is setting the tone early, running through all types of tackles and put the defense back on its heels. Now a play fake here on first down. And this is a catch by Ted Ginn. And he's got this down to the 35. The catch and run, good for 18 and a first down. after one start of the second quarter and it's the Colts in possession as they've got it with a first and ten so in Saints territory now here's first and ten at the 35 yard line they'll go with Hill here on first down Hill shedding the tackle and he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down, second and right at a yard. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. Staying on the ground, this time it's Smith. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. Second and one is often an invitation to take the big shot downfield. I'll bet the offensive lineman said, are you kidding? We just get on our backs and let's go get the first down. They love being physical. They keep it with Smith on first down. He's got the first down inside the 10. And finally wrestled down at the eight yard line. That one goes for 16 yards. It sets him up first and goal. Consecutive plays now where that offensive line has really created a lot of space. And we've seen the confidence rise, haven't we? It borders on arrogance now, and that's that good arrogance. Believing you can run the... And he takes this one in for a Colts touchdown. Edo Smith, his ninth touchdown of the season as his guys are on the board first here tonight. And there you go, nothing really too complex. Block, keep to your assignments, let them run it in. They did it. Fundamental football. Good blocking, beats good tackling on that play, and result, touchdown. 
Extra point good by Prater. And that makes the score 7-0. So that drive in total eight plays. And the capper that put it in the end zone, a run of eight yards. And after the touchdown, out is Prater to kick. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. The partner just looking at some of the struggles they've had this season. The playoffs are not in their future. As they start to peer toward the offseason, what moves might they make? I think the running back position, and I know we talk all the time about the NFL being a passing league, but the teams that run the ball effectively, they're the ones that go deep into the playoffs and go to the Super Bowl. They have to upgrade here. And you and I both know in recent years in the draft, people have shied away from taking a runner early, but there's that special one there. I say they go get him. Ball on the 30, they'll come up with a second and five. All day, every day, any day. Here's gone. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he'd been able to haul that one in. From the gun on third down, gone. And he can't hang on to it. Nearly picked. He's known for his hands defensively, but instead it just brings up fourth down. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? The zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's go. nothing available there for him. Edo Smith heading back out with the rest of his offensive crew. A 1,000-yard campaign in his sights, Charles, but needs a little bit of a kick here down the stretch to reach it. And sometimes at this stage of the season, you're looking for that extra goal, right? That extra motivation to accomplish what you want, not just as a team, but as individuals. He's got to stretch a little bit to get there. That might be what they're talking about during the practice sessions in their meetings. Hey, we can still get this done. Let's go ahead and feed him the ball. And the offensive line, I'm sure they're well aware of where he stands as well. They are, and I think... And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Paul Richardson, an 80-yard touchdown. And the Colts strike quickly here for six points. One play, 80 yards. Pretty easy drive to recap. <laughs> it certainly is, but not so easy to execute. Starting on your own 20, you want something to kickstart your drive and get it off to a nice start. They went for the whole thing and got it. That's a great way to send a message to the opposing team. Prater for the extra point, and that'll make the score 14 to zip. And after the touchdown, out is Prater to kick. That's fielded in the end zone, and no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Back out onto the field now comes the New Orleans offense. Already down two touchdowns here in the first half. This becomes a pretty important drive, doesn't it? It certainly does, and a lot of the teams script plays. We know that, right? They, they have a script to start the ball game, and typically those scripts go between 12 and 24, 25 plays. Down two touchdowns early, probably not very deep into their script. I think they'll stay with it. I don't think they'll abandon it just yet and try and generate some offense on this drive. Anything, at least three points get that zero off the board. The extra effort after the catch makes it good for a gain of 26 and also a first down. We always talk about having to read defenses and how complicated that is. Well, this was an excellent read. Read the pressure and got rid of the football before it even got to him for a nice game. And when they're blitzing like that, running back usually a good spot to go with the football. And he fires one that's intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And he will bring it back. An interception return for the Colts TD. Now, remember, this is the number one defense in the National Football League. There's a good example of why. Shows that they set an aggressive tone, not just stopping the run, not just getting after the quarterback, but the ball's in the air. 
They treat it like they're the receivers, and they went after that one and took it all the way. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And some dangerous territory. You're already down three scores. A three and out here or an inability to put any points up. This one might be over by half. Yeah, and what you also have to guard against is calling every play for a big shot downfield. You know, thinking you're going to get all these points back on one drive. You're not. And last time I looked, it's still the first half. I'm not saying you have ultimate patience here, but you also don't have to go ahead and force everything either. They start on the ground with Goldman, and he'll get this from the 25 to the 30 for a pickup of five. And that's one of the reasons you like to blitz even on rundowns. It confuses the blocking assignments. It doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. Quick throw caught out wide by Renfro. Had his hands on it, but dropped it. The rookie making a little bit of a rookie mistake. Third down. Some of the fans here don't seem too happy about what we've seen in this first half. No, not at all. And I understand why they've looked lethargic, out of sync, and it shows on the scoreboard. Out of the gun. Gone. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by Casey Hayward. And he will bring it back. An interception return for a Colts TD. That pick six extending this lead even further. And boy, it's been a while since I've seen a team struggle this badly in the first half. I think all they want to do is get to the locker room, try and regroup, and come out to start the third quarter. But if things don't improve fast then, I think the backups get a lot of play in the second half. Extra point good by Prater. And the route is on here in this first half. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Getting set to go again here on offense, Jared Goff trots back onto the field. In second quarter, they're down big already. He's struggling as well. They've got to find something here. He's got to find something on this drive. And sometimes you take on all that extra pressure on yourself, and maybe you have to disperse it a little bit. Lean on some other people. Lean on your teammates. Find someone who can take the pressure off and get the ball in their hands for a while. Or this, if he doesn't, this is getting out of hand or it could get worse. Umpire threw the flag, usually always indicates holding, and that's what we've got. And you know, depending on their positioning, where you are on the field, the umpires get different responsibilities, but always, always making sure no one's holding. On first down, a running play ends up going backwards as he won't get close to the line of scrimmage. In fact, he's going to lose four yards. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. A reminder coming up just a few minutes from now. We'll send you to Jonathan Coachman and our crew in Orlando. Coach will have a look back at some of the stats and scores from yesterday's action. Now a throw left sideline here is complete. That catch good for five. It's third down. The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts. So as they take it over, we step aside. And for the Colts, an extra defensive back in there now on third down. Here's the first carry for Bo Scarborough. And he'll take this up only to about his 18-yard line. Now the Colts going to burn the second of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Here's Cameron Johnston now as the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. Here's Ginn. 
Call that one an even 60 yards, 6-0. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and 10. Edo Smith heading back out with the rest of his offensive crew. He's been effective so far over the 40-yard mark here in the second quarter. Don't forget about those guys up front, though. They've been effective, too. The leverage game has been in their favor. They've been the ones who've been able to bend their knees, drop their hips, and get a little bit lower than the guys on the other side of the football, and they've moved them out of the way for the runner. Sometimes that's tough for those big fellas. Not an easy thing for them to do. And now the drive starts with a completion out to the right. A pickup of about three yards as he's taken down at the 31. Looking to throw again on second down. Stafford, and that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. So he can't hang on, and as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know. But you're going to get hit anyways, might as well hold on to the ball. All right, you know a coach said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player, not a chance at all. Way easier said than done. He'll get this to his speedster, Paul Richardson. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Now Stafford. And the Saints pressure gets him. Brought down for a sack. Everson Griffin just would not be denied. That's a loss of seven. He gets it complete to Harris. And they've got it well across midfield, down to the 40 before it's all said and done. That one covers 24 yards. It's a first down. Here is Matt Prater now. He's got the leg for this as he holds the NFL record with a 64-yarder back in 2013. They'll spot it at the 47, so call it a 57-yard attempt. So we've reached halftime here in what is quickly turning into quite a route. As we'll get you over to Orlando, where standing by is Jonathan Coachman. He has our EA Sports halftime report. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. We'll get back to you and Charles in a minute. But first, time to give the folks at home a look at what's going on around the NFL. We'll begin up at Bank of America Stadium. And now due to apparent time constraints, we fast forward to the beginning of the second half. Second half ready to get underway. The Colts with a lead, and they will receive the football. This is taken at the three. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. As the Colts offense makes their way out, we take a look at the playoff picture in the AFC. And for them, it's no longer a question of will they make the playoffs. They've clinched the division title. The question, can they hold on to that number one seat? And this is where the mental fortitude comes to play, doesn't it? Because now you've got just the coach talking about it, his team talking about it to each other, supporting each other, carrying each other along, because having that number one seed means everything in the NFL. It does. So even though the division title's clinched, shouldn't take the foot off the gap. No, not at all. Play it all the way through. And I think we've seen that in recent years in the NFL. The teams that play and play to win each and every game, they're the ones to deal with in the playoffs. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. A first down there on a pickup of 25. They're trying to show that they can run the ball, protect this lead, give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. So in Saints territory now, here's first and 10 at the 42-yard line. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, second down. And he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, that was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just so quick, quick, quick. And what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. Now a quick throw as that's complete on the hitch route. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. The extra effort after the catch makes it good for a gain of 26 and also a first down. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. 132 fighter, eight read. Let's go, let's bring it. Let's a first down carry for Smith. Looking to find a lane, but he can't rein in at the line of scrimmage. 
In on the stop, Vernon Hargraves. Looked like he was trying to bounce it outside, but no success. Yeah, sometimes you got to just figure out where you're going to go, and sometimes you just have to take it to another spot. And trying to get it outside, the defensive pursuit was there and just ran him down. The passing game for the Colts finding its stride, another first down. Whatever the discussions were at halftime to try to slow down this offense, it has not worked to this point. Yeah, I have a vision right now of everything that was discussed at the half just being torn in shreds or being erased off of the Microsoft Surface tablets because none of it is working. They are really locked in on offense. They'll try to pound it in with Hill. And not a whole lot there. He does get a couple, taking it from the five down to the three. Good first step there defensively, but they're still knocking on the doorstep, so maybe another run here? I think so. One of my favorite coaches just say, son. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Brian Hill, his ninth touchdown of the season as his guys continue to put this one out of reach. And certainly some credit there for that touchdown goes to the offensive line. They never get the credit they deserve in the stat sheet, but they are the reason that they got the points. Excellent job up front, clearing the way for the score. Now Prater to add the PAT. And he's been a busy man, five for five now, as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And it ends with a three-yard scoring run. After the touchdown, out is Prater to kick. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Now the attention turns to the Saints offense getting ready for their first possession of the second half. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone, you know, not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try and figure out what is working and call more of that. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here, and if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up the score. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there are more people there to get him down. And they're able to swarm him behind the line, and his rough night continues. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. They'll run again here with Gallman. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 10 yards, good for his Saints first down. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. Goff on first down. Complete to Hilton. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. He'll get 15 and a Saints first down. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big time run, big time pass. A one-two combination. Look pretty good. How about that? Let's see if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. And he'll lose yardage here. Back at the 41. A loss of two there. Second down. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports.
On second and 12, Goff. That's complete to Goldman. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. And this is off target to the left. Didn't get there anyway. It's no good, and this score will stay right where it is. Now listen, now no kick from 50-plus is a gimme, but here you're indoors in a dome. You'd think ideal conditions. Yeah, and it's one that he would expect himself to make, not just us expecting him to make it. Over the years, my theory is very simple. The athletic ability of kickers continues to get better and better. Check their background. They're all county, all state, and other positions, not just soccer players. These guys expect themselves to be great as well. So some holding over on the left side of that O-line. And I know for the guys trying to move those big defensive people, they'd love for them to stay in one spot. But they move around so quick and so fast that sometimes you just have to grab them. So following the hold, they're in a bit of a hole here with a first and 20. Following the penalty, it's Hill. Michael Kendricks, the linebacker, there to get him down. Bottom line, they want to keep this clock rolling, so they'll take that one right there. They just want to keep falling forward, and they want to put the onus on the big fellas up front in order to bring this one home. Second down, Stidham to throw. And this will be broken up and incomplete. Now a penalty flag down, and they may be going backward here. In the backfield, the pass protect, and sometimes try to protect the QB, you hold. And the key word, as you noted, protect, right? Sometimes you get out of position, get out of whack. It's just quarterback protect mode, and he got nailed for the penalty. On second down, here's Stidham. And his throw is going to be incomplete. The linebacker, Miles Jack, able to knock that one away. When you see passes knocked down by those guys I call the frustrated fullbacks, the linebackers, you know that in their zone coverage, they were able to drop, see the ball thrown, and react to it very quickly. They'll set up the screen to Smith. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. A big pickup, 18 yards, but they still stop him well short of the marker. They dialed up the screen pass on third down, and for a second, it looked like it was all going to come together, and they had a chance to pick up a first down, but the defense got there and finished it off. Now here's Michael Dixon. Always a good sign when your first punt comes in the fourth quarter. And just a single punt for him in the loss last week as he sends this one away. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. The Saints coming out now to take the field. And let's face it, this drive is not going to have any bearing on this game, but it's kind of important for one reason, isn't it? It certainly is. you got to get points. And okay, all right, I'm being facetious here. But you get points, you feel a little bit better about yourself as you move on to the next one. Now gone. They'll find Everett there, complete. And he is brought down at the 22 after a gain of two, and it brings up second down. From the 22, here's second and eight. To throw is gone. And that will be incomplete. Tried to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. This one winding toward a conclusion, and how would you assess how the secondary has played? Well, we just saw them take another shot downfield that was incomplete, correct? Correct. So my assessment is that if anyone's played really well in this game, it's been the secondary. That was the latest example. Yeah, they've been solid. Really, the whole defense has been solid, still pitching a shutout. Really good defensive effort. They were all over that little swing pass out to the right side before lost yardage. Terrific read. 
better execution and done with a lot of enthusiasm, wasn't it? Absolutely. They saw it all the way, ran to the football, and caused a nice play for loss yardage. Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. And the Colts coming out now with this lead and the football things obviously looking good, but maybe... Yeah, you've taught me this before. Maybe this is where the defense is hoping that the offense helps them preserve that shutout that they've got going. And it has to be in the minds of the offense that they know how rare it is to get a shutout. So take care of them. Protect them. Take care of the ball. Move it downfield. Run the clock down. You don't want your defense to have to go on the field again the rest of the game. Reward them. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So the Colts in possession of the football as we get your reset. They've got a second down now as they look to salt this one away. On second down, it's Hill. It's a five-yard gain, but they'll still be a yard short here with third down now looming. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. They'll try and run for it with Smith. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. That's good for an Indianapolis first down on a gain of 10. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. Now Edo Smith. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Indianapolis moving the chains there on a gain of 12. Uh, he's still rumbling, isn't he? Still looking fresh in this one despite the heavy workload. But you and I both know, well-conditioned, and he did tell us that he thrives on being at his peak late in ball games. On first down, Smith. And he'll get this one down to about the 27. The tackle by Eric Armstead. And this is why aggressive defensive coordinators love to blitz. It wreaks havoc because they end up taking their attention to the blitzers, freed up the D lineman to make the play. So this one winds up an Indianapolis victory. And I tell you what, Charles, this might be about as good as it gets. They were incredible. Yeah, offense was in fine form. The defense threw the shutout at them. I think they worked in concert together. What I like about the offense was that they held the ball pretty well. You know, time of possession, exactly what they were looking for in this one. And that helped out their defense. Didn't have to be out there the entire time. So when you do that and you're out there fresh playing, up a little extra spring in your step, and it showed up in this one. They had a ton of spring in their step. Impressive victory. So for Indianapolis, they continue to roll as the win gets them to 12-2 and two on the year, and they will head back home next week. Meanwhile, for the Saints, they drop their 10th game now to fall to 4-10, and 10. and they'll try to rebound next week on the road in Sports, it's in the game.